Hey guys, in this video I will show you a couple of things. First of all, uh, we will be importing data into your Backendless application from CSV files. Then we will inspect some spatial data types, meaning the, the data that identifies location uh, locations on the map. And then we will inspect schema, specifically schema related to, once again, spatial data types. To start, uh, we will import data. To do this, you would switch to the Manage screen and then select the Import Data option. You'll see a couple of, uh, a lot of browse buttons here. The one that we will be importing is this, uh, the browse button for Backendless app. Uh, what I did is I prepared a, uh, a zip file that contains a couple of CSVs. Each CSV contains data for a data table. Let's take a look at, the, at that zip file. Uh, you'll see that uh, here's the zip file, and then this folder is the uh, the contents of the zip file. I extracted it just to demonstrate what's inside of the zip file. And in here you'll see two CSVs. One is called World Wonders CSV, and the other is Country. Uh, each of these CSVs contain uh, objects or data records that will be uh, that will go into Backendless database. But all you need is a, is a zip file. Of course, you can import individual CSVs, and specifically on this screen, you see that these browse buttons, uh, specifically the browse button for the data service, using this browse button, you can import individual CSV. But we have packed them into a zip file, thus we can use the browse button for backendless app. Uh, click the browse button, uh, select that zip that we have here, uh, click open, and then to start the import process, click the import button. There is a green pop-up here that says that the import process has started. Uh, console doesn't wait for the import process to complete for the reason that some zip files and CSVs may contain a lot of data. They could be very large. Thus, it makes sense to make that process asynchronous, so it kind of goes on in parallel. And uh, when it's complete, you will receive an email saying that the import process has completed. I'll show you a little trick to, uh, so, you so you can know how to check the status of the import process. To do this, you would switch to the files section and you will see that there is an import directory. And this import directory will contain the actual zip that is being processed. And there's also gonna be a log file. And uh, to see the contents of the log file, click this little icon that says edit file. And uh, this is gonna be a detailed log of everything that Backendless is doing to import the data. Most importantly, uh, you'll see the very last line if it says impo importing finished, that means that the import has uh, completed. If there are any errors during the import, you will also see it here in the log file. But when importing is finished, and the email is sent to you, and you can actually see the data in the backendless database. To do this, switch to the data screen, and uh, w there we have it. There are two data tables, world wonders and country. Uh, click, uh, select the data table, and this is, this is the data that came into backendless from the CSV. So let's take a look at what we have here. A couple of interesting things. Well, first of all, uh, these are the seven uh, world wonders of the new world. Uh, these are the names and uh, these are the locations. Uh, Backendless now includes a way to visualize those locations on the map. Uh, the column name is LOC, short for location. The data type of this column is point. If you click visualize, then there is a map rendered right in the browser where you can see each and every uh, location here. You can zoom in down on the particular locations. For example, if we go for the Colosseum, uh, in Rome, you can uh, click this little icon right here that says find a map and uh, it zooms in. So let's just zoom out a little bit. And uh, here we have the Colosseum in Rome. And uh, this is the location that uh, corresponds to this particular uh, point. And likewise, you can go to, let's say, Taj Mahal. And uh, once again, let's zoom out. And uh, here's the Taj Mahal. Uh, you can edit these locations and see the, the greater details by clicking this icon right here, which is the geometry editor. So for example, for Taj Mahal, if we open this, it shows you the latitude and longitude coordinates of this location. You can zoom in and see it right there. If you click or tap on any other location on the map, the point will shift. So for example, you see it, it changes. If you click save, it's gonna be updated to that particular location, or we're gonna cancel out just so we don't change anything. 
there is a relation column to a country. So for instance, you uh, can navigate to a country where Taj Mahal is. So click on relation and it opens uh, a record from the country table. Uh, and we know that Taj Mahal is in India and that's the, that's the record right here. If we go back to World Wonders, uh, switch to schema. This is the schema for the table. Notice that the LOC column, uh, the data type is point. Uh, uh, and for the country, it is a data relation, one-to-one -to, -one to the table country. You can rename uh, that uh, column and uh, let's change it to location. Press return. The table, uh, the column name is updated. And if we go back to data browser, now it says location. Uh, and uh, the column name is important because when you integrate the client side, the data that comes back will be represented by a property in the response that has the same name as the column name. You can actually see it if, we, if you go to REST console and uh, click get, then this, is this executes an API request. And notice that uh, the column name now is location and it includes this JSON, which is the GeoJSON format that identifies the location uh, for that particular point. In this case, it is for the object that is the Great Wall of China. So that's a couple of things in this video, uh, including import, inspection of the spatial data, inspection of the schema, and all of these are fairly important as you work with your data in back analysis. So hopefully you found, that this, found this useful. Uh, thank you, and as always, happy coding.